why they call this the summer term, that's what I'd like to know. It's this place. There was brilliant sunshine when I left home. You'd think they'd light a fire, wouldn't you? Girls, girls! You will have plenty of time for gossip over the remaining 17 and a half weeks of term. Less talk and a lot more action. Mildred, go and park your broomstick in the shed. But it's getting worse out there, Miss Hardbroom. Then I suggest, Mildred, that you do it at the double. The rest of you, up to your rooms with all this luggage. I don't know what today's parents are thinking of. All I ever needed for school would fit into one small suitcase. Miss Hardbroom! Miss Hardbroom! Yes, Mrs. Tapioca. I have been a problem in kitchen. Very important. Just have to deal with it yourself, Mrs. Tapioca. It's the first day of term, and as you can see, we are all extremely busy. Mildred, I told you. I lost my way, Miss Hargrim. You can't see a thing out there. I went right round in a circle. It's a whiteout. I think I've got frostbite on my fingers. Oh, poor Bambina. She's a frozen to death. You come with me. I make a nice big hot chocolate for you. Uh, Miss Hardbroom, could we have some hot chocolate too, please? Certainly not. If you really are that cold, Class 2, I shall have to find some other way to thaw you out. Thank you, Mrs. Tapioca. This must be the cosiest place in the whole castle. Oh, I bet nobody ever said that when it was a dungeon. <laughs> What is it? You hear anything? No. Oh, bad weather driving him indoors. It's monstroso. Big whiskers, big along a tail, big along a claws. Oh. Oh. <laughs> big brain box also. None of Franco's traps work on him. He take a cheese. He take a bacon run. Take a take a take. Piero, I call him. He's more a rat than a mouse. <laughs> oh, I find a way to catch him. You wait and see. <laughs> what about lightning? Oh yes, I name her right. Quick as lightning to take tin food from plate. <laughs> but mice. <laughs> you think that you're more clever than me, Piero. <laughs> I show you. <laughs> I think I better go now. Make no noise. Pianissimo. <laughs> Jadu. Stop flapping around like a fish in a net. He's up, you two. Hop two, hop two, hop two, hop two. It's hop your two. fault, Mildred Hubble. What? Oh, You've landed this one on us. We're not going to forget it. Come along, Mildred. Join in on the back of the line. Come on, girls. Twice around the corridor, up and down the stairs, and a cold water wash before lunch. That'll get your circulation going. We know you well enough by now. Oh, all right. I know. Why don't we hide under the stairs and then tag on to the end when they come back round? If only there was a roaring fire somewhere. Oh, yes. I've got this. My mum gave it to me. It's warm. It's a hand warmer. Let me have a feel. My hand warmer. Hand warmer? Sorry, thought you were witching me. I better go get the others. What's that? I think it was Merlin. Oh yes, your boyfriend from Hellebore's Wizard Academy. We thrashed him and his two friends in that debating contest last year. Oh, I remember. Baz and Gaz. Mildred, Maud, what are you girls doing down here? Please, Miss. 
slacking. There's someone at the door. Well, where are they? But I don't want to hear any silly excuses. There you are, Hellebore. I told you we were going in the right direction. Ridiculous, Rowan Red. We'd still be wandering about in the forest if I hadn't have found the path. It was young Merlin who led us here. Anyway, we'd never have been lost in the first place if you hadn't started throwing blizzard spells at me. I was provoked by a snowball down the back of my neck. An accident. I don't expect senior wizards to have snowball fights with pupils. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> Uh, gracious ladies, we poor lost travellers here seek shelter from the bitter weather. <laughs> well, well, it's Mildred Hubble, the little witch who rescued me from Froggydom. Good heavens. Why on earth are you girls wearing shorts in this weather? It's as cold in here as it is outside. I know what you need. <laughs> If it isn't Fenny and Grizz. Tackle's deadly dynamic duo. Oh, no. Look what the wind's blown in. Waiting outside the head's office again. Been naughty girls, have we? Oh, dear. What a shame. I'm warning you two. Careful, Baz. We don't want to make the girlies cry. Right, that does it. I thought you weren't allowed to do that sort of thing. So did I. Only to complete wallies. Better organise some refreshments. Oh, good, you got the message. Run and fetch some snacks from Mrs. Tapioca for Hellebore and Rowan Webb. Wizard food, you know, crumpets, cheese, scones, and so forth. You boys can eat with the girls in the great hall. With pleasure, Miss Keppel. It'll wear off. Eventually. Hey, look! Does anyone know how to reverse the spell? Oh, no. We're not clever enough for that. That's bird year stuff. It'll keep them off your back for a while. Come have lunch with us. They'll kill me. We'll protect you. Bye-bye. Well, well, well. They look rather funny, don't they? Perhaps you should help them, providing they're willing to help us. Personally speaking, Mr Rowan Webb and Mr Hellebock, or should I call you Algernon and Egbert? Personally speaking, I've always believed in layers. Take this. I knitted it myself. And two or three vests. You can't have too many vests. Don't you agree, Algernon? And underneath this, Granny Bat's secret ingredient. Thick layer of goose grease. Although I myself use mock goose grease. Composed entirely of onion and garlic oil. It's far kinder to the geese. And in some ways, even more efficacious. When I was a frog, I never used to feel the cold at all. Here, try some of these winter warmers. I made them myself. Uh, to your grandmother's recipe? How did you guess? Your Honours, this is most unexpected. Dear Miss Cackle, so pleased to see you. Mrs Tapio, Thanks, Mrs. Miss Bart. Oh, don't mind if I do. You should have let me know you were coming. Then we could have arranged for... Mm -hmm. Are you all right, Miss Drill? Mm -hmm. Your honours. Just a little something I make for you. Tagliatelli e quattro fromaggi. Miss Cacco, she like it very much. Uh, yes, very droll. <laughs> what do you say, Miss Drill? <laughs> I could cook them up something quick in my corner. Uh, don't put yourself out, Miss Bat. <laughs> we could eat with the girls. I've always been partial to school dinners. You wouldn't want to, really. No, no, no. Indeed we would. It'd be just like old times. What do you say, Hellebore? Who's on duty? Miss Hardbroom, I think. <laughs> For you everywhere, Mrs. Tapioca. Dinner is 15 minutes late. That Piero big trouble. I tell you, you see, deal with it yourself. I try to deal, but no use. Now dinner late. Mildred, have you got?
got anything to do with the brazier that is burning brightly in the entrance hall? And what is this boy doing? What are these boys doing here? Miss Hardbroom, I am enchanted to see you again. What's wrong with you, lads? You still look frozen stiff. No, it's no wonder. It's like the North Pole in here. What you need is another hellebore heating installation. <laughs> That's enough, girls. Oh, look at their faces. Wonderful what happiness a little warmth can bring. Well, thank you very much for your kindness, Your Honour. But I'm afraid there's a problem with the food. The grave is cold, the meat is overcooked, and the peas are like a bully. Marvellous. Just like the old days. Do you know, I'm so delighted. I'm going to ask Miss Cackle, right here and now, for a half-day holiday. It's the first day of term. It can be the last day of the holidays. I declare this day an upside-down day. Yay! It's my privilege as master of the revels. You're the master of the revels. There's no such thing. Oh, yes, there is. I inherited the title from my father. I do believe there's a book about it in the library. I know the one. Ancient Customs and Traditions of Cackles Academy. We know where it is. Well, off you go and get it, then. We'll save you a place in the queue. Afternoon off. Everything we announced this morning turned upside down. Are you going to allow this, Miss Cackle? My hands are tied, Constance. He is the Master of Revels. Oh, it's an honorary title. No Master of the Revels has ever done anything, not since the Middle Ages. But they may do. It's all in the book. You see, everything is stood on its head. Instead of lessons, we have games. I've tried talking him out of it. And here's the best bit. We choose two pupils to be teachers for the day. And I think it should be you two. Great, yes. Let's see another one. I see anyone eating sweets at the back, they'll have a thousand lines and a double detention. <laughs> As you can see, girls, for the rest of the afternoon, everything will be done in accordance with the ancient tradition of Upside Down Day. Miss Fenella Feverfew <laughs> and Miss Griselda Blackwood <laughs> will be running a potions class for some of the teachers. We all end in tears. I can feel it in my bones. No whispering at the back. <laughs> For the rest of the school, there will be games and diversions, such as handy dandy, musical bumps, hide and seek, nuts in May, charades, forfeits, and other such innocent pastimes. Uh, we will need a couple of impartial persons to be judges to award prizes or penalties as appropriate. We'll do it, sir. Barry and I. We're outsiders, so we're bound to be fair. Very well. The afternoon will end in a big feast here in the Great Hall. <laughs> After which, everything will be back to normal. Let the games commence! <laughs> Dandelion, liverwort, or bladder rack. I think that this whole thing is just about your most irresponsible idea yet, Archie. <laughs> it's just like being back at Wizard College. Oh, yes. And you know what happened there? You got yourself changed into a frog for 40 years. Well, it wasn't my fault. It was that bully Mortimer Mistletoe. I warned you not to aggravate him. <sighs> if you weren't so useless at shape changing, you could have magic yourself back before you got lost. Quiet, you two. Uh, sorry, sorry, miss. miss. If you keep arguing like that, we're going to have to split you up. Be finishing off now, girls. It's a ridiculous idea for a potion. Not in any of the books. I'm sure it shouldn't be so black. I had an accident with the slow juice. I wonder what Bat and Drill are up to. Hey! Miss! Constance and Amelia are cheating! We were not! It's too late now anyway, girls. Time's up. Sip your potions. 
Ridiculous. An anti-gunge potion. What would anyone want that for in the first place? And now, we're going to test them. I would like to remind you, Fenella Feverfew, that this day will, in the fullness of time, come to an end. Well, you thought it was pretty funny when we got statued by those stinky third-year girls. And you, you traitor. And it'll pay back for the running we had to do this morning. But well, we're not playing this stupid game anymore. You have to. We're in charge. Your friend, the Master of Revels, said so. Till after the feast. Do you know, I actually just found myself wishing Harbour would appear. I wish she was in charge instead of these two idiots. We'll keep wishing, because after Pass the Magic Parcel, we're playing hide and sack. You mean seek? No, we don't. It's for forfeits. And we're it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, fifteen, thirty. Now listen here, you lazy cat. You ready? Here come Piero, round corner, with a big a piece of best of Parma ham. What you do? What you do, eh? <laughs> that much I work out for myself. It's all gone crazy up there. It's all gone crazy down here. Mr. Wizards want to make a feast. I say, why not do a magic one? They say Italian food is a magic food. <laughs> it is. What are you trying to do with lightning? Oh, new idea. Train her to catch Piero. <laughs> but she not want to chase mouse. Here, let me try. to wiggle it about a bit more. Tease her a bit. <laughs> oh, very good. That Piero better look out now. Look out yourselves. Gotcha. This is very dangerous. You get them out right away. It's only a game. And now they've got to do the forfeit. I think I feel safer out of it for a while. Did you hear about Harbin getting gunged? And the wizards? They got their potion in. They've been arguing about it ever since. Mildred! It was your fault. Oh, it's always my fault, isn't it? Liverwort! You should have used liverwort, not bladderwack! I asked you at the time, and you were too busy talking to listen to me. Wittering on like some whiskery old rabbit. No, oh, a rabbit am I? At least I don't hop around all day looking for water lilies to squat on. <laughs> That's it. I've taken your taunts long enough, Egbert Hellebore. I challenge you to a shape-changing contest. Uh, look here, Algie. Let's call it quits. Everyone knows how useless you are at this kind of thing. <laughs> oh, yes, well, we all know how clever you are, Egbert Hellebore. So... Shall we begin? You're full of talk, Helly Boar, and grey and whiskery too. So here's a little creature that reminds me a lot of you. Very funny. One little bite is all I'd need to make if I were a curling, twisting, hissing, Poisonous, striking, snake! Dear, I am scared. So now let's see who is the best magician. I didn't know you'd turn this into a hissing competition. <laughs> I don't think I'll bother to change myself. Why don't we call a truce? What we need here is a goose girl to come and say boo to the goose. <laughs> I 
I call that cheating, but never mind. I'm sure I can make her shriek. I'm sure that goose girls are terrified of little creatures that squeak. <laughs> you think you're very smart, Archie. But what will a house mouse do when he looks high above him and hears... Do it. Do Go in bed. Algie! He's done it again. He's got stuck. I saw him quick. He's gone down to the kitchens. What's the panic? Lightning! <laughs> So stuck again, Your Honour. Turn back. Why doesn't he turn himself back? You've gone crazy or something. That isn't Mr. Webb the wizard. That's Piero, the mouse. <laughs> Got you at last, my little friend. Some <laughs> words. Oh, no. <laughs> Is that you in there, Mr. Webb? Of course it is. <laughs> You're not so clever a mouse as Piero. No. And not so clever a wizard as Egbert Hellebore. Well, girls, the unusual weather seems to be over. And so does a very unusual day. <laughs> Which is never to be repeated. Indeed not. No more shape-changing for me. I've learnt my lesson, girls. And mine, too. I do wish you'd change your mind, Algy, about staying with us. No, I need a place of my own. Somewhere by the water, perhaps. A lake or a river. With perhaps one young apprentice to teach all my secrets. And I shall invite Mildred and her classmates to visit at half-term. To thank her for saving me, twice. And make up for all the chaos I've caused. Uh, not just you, Algy. Before we leave, I think you boys should apologise to Mildred and Merlin. And you too. No, it's all right. It's from one of those days. No hard feelings. Would anyone like a sweetie? 